I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do for class this week because you know, you guys are doing production. I've taught you everything I can about production. Um, so I was trying to figure out like, okay, what can I teach during this time that would be helpful? So what I decided to do is I decided that today we would get into my acting lesson. Dun, 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 dun. Cause some of you are doing some acting maybe for other films. Um, but also I think this can be beneficial and helpful as you are working with actors. Um, nor this, uh, this lesson is really structured as to how to help you be a better actor. But I think if we look at it in, in a slightly different perspective, I think it can also be really helpful to help you learn how to work with actors or how to help your friends who are acting for you better prepare or, or be better actors. So I think this is kind of a good lesson for right now since we're going to start filming right away. And then later on in the next few weeks, I'll do some After Effects lessons. Um, that's more post-production type, type of stuff. Um, and then we've got some other fun little things that we'll be doing um, as we get closer and closer towards, um, towards the end of March and towards April and towards May. So we still have much to do. There are still things that we will be doing. Um, so many exciting things. I promised you the full freestyle experience. I'm going to give it to you. I will find a way. Um, so today we'll be focused on acting or what I call performances that bring the film alive. Now, so um, acting is actually, I joke about actors and how like they're garbage and how like they're just seeking the approval of the world because daddy didn't love them or something like that, you know? Um, but the truth is, the truth is um, like acting can really make or break a film. I hate to give actors that much credit, but the truth is actors can really make or break a film. I mean, if, if you have an actor that's really committed to the role, they, stupid roles can be believable um, and stupid writing can be, actors can in some ways save a, bad, a badly written film to some degree. Story is still king. If you have a rotten film, you know, it's a rotten film period, but a good actor can help bring it back a little bit into the light. On the other hand, a bad actor can take a very well-written screenplay and make the film hot garbage. So that's something that you want to be mindful of because actors do make a difference because again, it all ties back into what we've talked about for the last year and a half, which is the suspension of disbelief. Film, movies, they're a magic trick, right? It's getting your audience to believe in this world that you have created and they need to keep that suspension of disbelief intact. And that goes back to your story, that goes back to your writing, that goes back to believable dialogue, like we talked about in our screenwriting lesson, that goes back to the film mode stuff, that goes back to how you edit your films and continuity and things like that. But it also has to deal with your actors and their their performance and the believability of that performance. Are they selling that motivation? Are they making it seem like their character would actually behave in this way? Anytime I, I can tell they're acting or anytime you can tell as an audience member that they're acting, that ruins the suspension of disbelief. And it reminds everyone that this is really just a magic trick. So the acting really does make a difference, despite the fact that I rag on actors and, and, and make them sound like they're, we build them up way too much, which we do. We build them up way too much. Don't, don't let them know that I said that because we don't need their ego getting any bigger than it already is. But it is important. So how can we work on acting? So I'm gonna preface um, my remarks today with this question, what makes a good performance and what makes a good actor? I'll ask you, what do you think? What makes a good performance and what makes a good actor? Someone who like draws from like their real life experiences for emotions and reactions. Okay, I like that. That's, that's a good strategy. Anyone else? For a good performance, doesn't sound like you're um like you know when someone's making a speech or something and you can tell they're they're acting out this stuff but it doesn't sound like a natural conversation it's like the opposite it just sounds like speaking is when it's a good performance okay so like like not overacting i guess something like that um, knowing the difference between theater acting and film acting. Oh, good. I've talked about this in my class before, knowing the difference between theater acting and film acting. I'll, I'll get to that. Um, I, I have sort of a subtle way of, of including that in my lesson today. 
Um, and I'll I'll remind all of you when we get to that point. Good good point. Because um, there's a difference. Because there's a difference. Yeah, go ahead, Nate. What makes a good performance is that if it doesn't seem like a performance, if it seems like real. Yeah, like authentic. It feels yeah. like it's genuine. Yeah. yeah. Building off what Nate and Arjun said, it's sort of like um, if the actor can like understand not only where they are coming from in their own life, but also where like the character that they're portraying is coming from. So just like understanding their character more. Good, 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 good. That's good. We're going to talk about that as well. So that's a good, that's a good point. Okay. So I, I, I want to preface um, further my remarks by saying, first of all, um, I am not, um, let me, let me stop my share so you can see my face. Um, I'm, I, I do not consider myself an actor. Okay. I have done some acting. Um, and I'm going to show you a little bit of some of my acting experience, which is very, very limited. Um, but the point that I'm making here is um, I'm going to teach you very basic things that I am familiar with and basic things that I have learned. Uh, and a lot of the information that I got today, I got from acting professional actor friends of mine. I actually interviewed a few people who I know who are professional actors. And I said, hey, what can I teach my students? What are some good strategies? And they sent me back some really good information. So a lot of the lesson that I have in here um, comes directly from them. If acting is your thing, and this is something that you want to pursue further, I would encourage you to seek out other voices than my own. Um, because I, can, I think I can only teach you so much. Personally, I kind of feel like acting can only be taught so much. I feel like I feel like, first of all, there's sort of an inherent ability to it. Like you can either you, you can either act or you can't. And there's nothing wrong with you if you can't. Um, in fact, there might be something wrong with you if you can. Uh, but see, like, <laughs> but but sometimes it's just that inherent ability, right? Like you can either act or you can't. And you can get better at it. You can definitely get better at it. At it. But I think there's definitely sort of like a natural sort of pretending ability that some people are sort of gifted with and some people you know have to work at you can get better and you can improve but it's so specific to certain roles like we critique roles when we critique acting and things like that but to to teach you how to become a better actor i can teach you how to prepare i can teach you how to how to how to what to think about and some strategies that might help you improve but i really think that acting like many other things in the arts, is something that you can really only get better at through practice and experience. Practice and experience and critique. Practice and experience and critique. And I think that is what helps you improve more than anything else. I don't think there's like a secret code to just all of a sudden becoming a good actor and being a professional. It just comes with practice and experience and getting feedback and seeing how that you can improve and working with different directors who want different things. And that stretches you and your performance and whatnot. So again, my experience is very limited, but I have done um, a few things, and uh, so I'll show you. I'll show you a few of my of my amazing fun things here. So um, let me share my screen again. Okay, so this is a movie that I worked on. There's Alyssa Milano, and um, I forget his name. He's a cool guy though. Um, so I worked as a, as a grunt, as a little PA on this particular film, but they also, they also had me stand in. It was a really fun day for me because one day I was on set just helping out being my production assistant self. And then this, um, one, of the casting, one of the casting girls came up to me and she's like, we need good looking people for this background shot. We want you to stand here. <laughs> I was like, really? I'm good looking? This is great. Um, so I am in this film. Very, very, very briefly. Again, I told you I do not have much acting experience, but you will see me here in this film just for a moment. Um, here we go. I'll show you. I'll show you where it is. Troy, it's good to see you. Boom! There I am. Right there. There's your teacher. You blinked and you almost missed it. So I'll, I'll show you to you again. So look, look over here on the right hand side of the screen, and you will see me. Here we go. Here we go. Right Troy. here. There I am. You. Oh, yeah. That's my face. Thanks. I don't know if I would even be able to watch that scene if there weren't so many good looking people in the background. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> so they told me I actually had to act for that scene because at first I was just standing there. And then they were like, we're going to put you in the front, you and this other girl. The other girl's not even in the shot. <laughs> so then, so like, we're going to put you in the front. 
And then, and then they actually told me, the director actually told me, Hey, like you're, you're actually in the front enough that, that we can actually see you. So we want you to react to what he's doing. Cause what he's doing is he's basically cutting the line into this fancy club. And we're like, how come he gets to cut the line? What makes him so special? And so I'm, I'm, if you can, if you watch me, I'm actually acting in that way. Like, what's he doing? How did he get to the front of the line? I am in the movie somewhere else too. I drive a car. I'm not going to show you that part because you really can't see me, but I do drive a car and my name is in the credits. I got my name in the credits, which is actually the thing I was most excited about. That was the, that was the most important thing. This was not, however, the end of my acting career. Believe it or not, this was only the beginning, only the beginning. So I also appeared. I also answered a casting call and I'm going to talk a little bit about casting calls. I also answered a casting call uh, for a commercial in San Francisco for a baseball team that you may or may not be familiar with. Um, and they emailed me back after I sent them my headshots and they actually, I actually got picked. So I got, I had a fun day where I got called in and I got to be on set all day and, and hung out with San Francisco Giants players and ate dip with Jeremy Affelt, who was a very nice guy and talked for, to Mike Kruko for like an hour because that guy will just keep talking forever. Um, and had a really delightful time and talked to a lot of the filmmakers there and made some connections um, and just learned a lot about being on a commercial set, which is something that I hadn't done on, on a commercial set. I had done corp, I had done a lot of corporate stuff, but I hadn't been on a commercial set before. So that was interesting and a fun experience for me. It was slightly different, not a whole lot different, but slightly different than some of the other things that I had done. So if you pay attention, you'll see me a couple of times. Um, I'm, you can see my arm at the beginning, I'm coming around a corner or something and I'm wearing blue. Um, but you'll see me at the end. I'm in the background and I'm having a grand old time celebrating, uh, as you'll see here in a moment. So um, this is my next acting experience for your enjoyment and benefit. All right, Dave. <laughs> OK, 5,000 it is. Yeah, you'll have them by Friday. All right, bud. Talk to you soon. So what was going through your mind when you closed it out? Yeah, oh, you know, Mark, I just had to stay focused. Woo! Keep my eye on the prize. Woo! Close it down, man. Woo! Close it down. Once you've been there, we're a part of you. Together, we're giant. Did you see me? Some of you saw me. Some of you are like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll show you where I am. I'll show you where I am. So hang on here. All right. I'll, I'll bring it back up here. I'll show you, show you where I am. My, my. 15 seconds of fame. Okay, I am about to come around this corner. You will only see my wrist for like half a second, um, but you will see me at the end, like in my in my full amazing glory. Hey, Dave. Ready, here I come. Here I <laughs> okay, come. Was, that, was, that, was, that was me. Yeah, you'll have them by Friday. All right. This was just an old like soon. building that was like yeah. completely yeah. unoccupied yeah. and they really, like, made it look like a, they made it look like an office. I act like I had something to do with it. Oh, do you see me? There I am, right there. There I am. This was actually really cool because they had sent all the extras home. Um, and I was just hanging out because filmmaker wanted to see what was going on. Um, I cleared my whole day. I had the day off from my job that I was working at the time. And I was up in San Francisco and I just wanted to hang out and like see what was going on. So it was cool. Like I, I talked with a few players and and um, I have my picture with the World Series trophy, which I'd already had before because um, I have other jobs. But um, but it was great. I had, I had a wonderful time. But what was really cool is I hung around for a while. And then when they were wrapping up this shoot at the end, they realized they wanted more people in the background because it was looking kind of sparse. So they kind of put a call out and they're like, hey, is there already is any of the actors still here? Any of the extras still here? And there were a handful of us that were still here. Um, and because I'm a smart actor, I had brought a couple of different shirts because it's always a good idea to bring a couple of different shirts for a couple of different looks. Um, so I had a, a blue shirt in the beginning of this commercial, but I also had a black shirt and a black shirt is good because that was the team color. Um, and so I put on the black shirt and then they had me stand here with a few of these other extras. Um, only a couple of these were extras. So these couple guys were extras. And then this girl over here is actually a staff member on the commercial shoot. And they gave us real champagne bottles and we went nuts. Um, and I still have my champagne bottle at home. It's, it's great. Um, and it was a lot of fun. We did a number of different takes. The first one, um, the first one was, um, it definitely gets in your eyes and burns your eyes. I can tell you that. 
Um, and then they just kept filling us up with water. They just kept filling up our bottles with water in the background. And we had a great time. This is um, Sergio Romo, who was hilarious. And Jeremy Affelt, who was very, very nice. And um, Matt Kane, whom I just adore. Um, he's just the best. Um, so here we go. You can see me again. Oh, there I am. There I go. So what was going through your mind? I pop it around every once in a while. I just had to stay focused. Keep my eye on the prize. Close it down, man. Close it down. Once you've been there, we're a part of you. I'm all over this place. Together, we're Great. trying. Great fun. Great fun. Great fun. Um, that was also not the end of my acting experience. It was actually um, a short time later that I answered a casting call for Major League Baseball. This is actually a cool story. Um, and I'll toot my own horn a little bit because like, this is legit. Your film teacher is legit. So um, I, uh, I answered a casting call for this thing called Major League Baseball Fan Cave. They wanted someone to watch every game of baseball, to live in New York City, and to watch every single game of baseball and like blog about it, basically. So they're so they're like, yeah. So so I applied like hundreds of thousands of other people across the country, and I sent them samples of my writing, and they actually emailed me back and said, hey, we really like what you wrote. We'd like you to do a video, and here are the parameters for the video. And I kind of laughed and smiled and said, okay, well now you're in my world. Um, so I did a video, and I sent in a, a little audition video. And I sent it in and they actually called me back um, and they called me back and they they interviewed me and then said, we would like you to come out to New York for an audition at our studios. And I was like, wow, this is really cool. And they said, do, do, you, do you play guitar? And I was like, yeah, I can play a little guitar. They're like, great, bring your guitar, sing us a baseball song. And I was like, um, OK, um, so I, I had to sign all this like NDA stuff. I couldn't talk about it with anyone. The only one that knew was like my mother and um, my my friend that I worked with because I had to get work off. So I had to like tell them what was going on. Um, and so I, I wrote a baseball song and I got my guitar and they paid to fly me out to um, New York. I was supposed to go to downtown New York and that was going to be awesome. Instead, they they flew me in and then drove me to Sukakis, New Jersey. There's nothing in Sukakis, New Jersey. Um, and so they put me up at this hotel and then I went and auditioned and there were like three stages of the audition. There were I had to do a little bit of writing and then there was like a part where I made like a brief little like vlog kind of video. And then there was this really intimidating part where I they brought you into a room and I was surrounded by like 30 major league baseball executives and creative types and they're filming you as they're peppering you with baseball questions. And I answered all the questions appropriately. I played my base. I wrote a baseball song in preparation and I played my baseball song and nailed it. It was awesome. It's also on YouTube. I have almost 200,000 views on it. So, hey, that's cool. Um, and um, I did my interview and then I left and that was the end of that. Now, I ended up not getting the job. They ended up hiring two guys that were actually like aspiring actors. Like they, one was in LA and one was in New York and they were both like people that had agents and were trying to be actors and stuff like that. And I don't regret not getting it. I, I kind of am sad that I, I didn't get the 10 grand a month that I was gonna be paid to watch baseball. And on day one, the two guys, I watched the first episode, the two guys were in New York hanging out with lingerie models. And, you know, that was a thing. Um, but it was a really cool experience. And when I went into that experience, my whole frame of mind, and this is the point that I'm telling, this is why I'm telling you this story. Because if you ever get into acting, this is the way you really want to frame your mind because acting comes with a lot of rejection. You're going to not get the part over and over and over and over again. Um, and that's okay because a lot of times it's really has nothing to do with you. Um, think about when you're casting people for your roles. Sometimes it's just, well, they need to look a certain way. Sometimes it's just, they need to be a certain age. Sometimes they just need to have the right kind of personality for what you envision. It doesn't mean they're a better or worse actor. It's just, you're trying to cast someone who's right for your vision for your film. Um, and that's the way it kind of is as an actor. All you really have control over is giving them your best, giving them your performance. And when I went in there and did my audition, I crushed that audition. That was one of the proudest moments of my life because they told me when I got there, I was one of 10 people out of over 100,000 applicants. And that's pretty wicked awesome. And I thought that was really cool. And I nailed that audition. I crushed that audition and I didn't get the part. But I was super happy. And when I left that room, a corporate executive of Major League Baseball looked at me and said, you are very talented. And I walked out of the room and felt like it doesn't matter what happens. Like I gave my very best 
And if they don't want me, it's because I wasn't right for that role. And after watching some of the episodes, I can see why. I can see why I wasn't right for that role. And I'm totally perfectly content with that. So that's the kind of mindset that you really need to have when you are auditioning and you know going about these roles because you're gonna get a lot of rejection and that can be really demoralizing if you're not prepared for that. And if you don't sort of frame it in that way, because that's, that's the reality. So I have broken down here in my slides, sort of kind of what, to, what you can do to prepare for the different stages of acting, what to do before your audition, what to do on the audition, and then what to do after you get the part. Uh, and these are things that you can apply to yourself if you're gonna do some acting in the future, or if you're acting for someone else's films here at Freestyle, or information that you can pass on to your actors, because I imagine most of us are probably casting our friends or family or neighbors or people that probably don't have a whole lot of acting experience. So this might be beneficial information for you to pass on to them to help them better prepare so that you get a better performance out of them in your film. So for the audition, the best thing you can do is obviously you wanna memorize your lines. You're going into an audition. You can't read the script when you're doing an audition. So you need to do the work of memorizing the part. Now, when you're going in for an audition, you, you're not memorizing the whole movie. They never even give you the whole movie when you do an audition. They just give you like two or three pages. And you kind of have to figure out like, what's this about? I have no idea. And you just have to interpret that character because they don't want to reveal the whole story a lot of the times unless they're like writing the part for you because you're a big shot actor, right? If you're going in for an audition, usually you have one scene and that's it. And that's all you have to work with. And you have no idea what's gonna happen to this character or what happened before this scene to this character. You just have to interpret that the best way that you can, which means you really need to be prepared to do it a number of different ways. So you wanna practice with someone else. You wanna practice the sides, okay? So that's practicing your script. You wanna practice with someone else because you get yeah, you can memorize the scene and just practice it by reciting it but that's going to sound kind of wooden that's going to sound kind of like you're just reciting it you need to practice it against a person right because the other person needs to read the other lines and feed you the lines so that you can react appropriately so much of so much of acting is reacting to what other people say so you want to practice with another actual person. It can be anyone to read the other section of the scene that's not your lines or whatever, but that becomes a really important part. You want to understand the scene as best you can. Uh, obviously, you're not going to have the whole movie if it's like a feature film. Sometimes you're going to have the whole thing because it's like a 30 second commercial, right? So you want to try to understand what's going on. What's the motivating factor for your character? Why is the character doing what they're doing? Because that will help you sort of reference those emotions from your own personal life so that you can convey the proper the proper emotion on screen. So try to understand it. You're film students. You have the benefit of that. You have the benefit of understanding why things are written certain ways sometimes. I think that helps you as an actor, right? So getting understanding motivation and character arcs and things like that can really benefit you when you're trying to understand a scene that someone else has written. Mark your beats. This is something that can be really, really helpful. So we talked about beats and story beats and character beats and, and stuff like that while we were doing Save the Cat, but this also applies to acting, okay? If you need to mark, a, like mark the sections where maybe you need to take a second before you respond because you want something to sink in. You want that gap because it allows the emotion to seep in. Right? I do that when I'm teaching sometimes because I want to emphasize a point, right? And you're like, oh, Mr. Taylor, just stop talking for a minute. I need to think about that, right? It, it has a different feeling, a different tone, a different emotion. It, it requires a different kind of energy. So if there's a moment in the screenplay, a lot of times those things are not written in the screenplay. That's up to you or to the director. And sometimes the director might hear you do it and say, oh, I like that. Let's keep that. And that's an opportunity for you to sort of influence your character. So read through the script and look at it and say, where do I need to mark my beats? Where do I need to take a breath? Where do I need to stop? Where does the, the, where does the scene change? Does the tone shift in any given scene? It usually does. Otherwise, why is the scene there, right? What is the purpose of this scene? There's usually a moment in the scene where the main purpose comes into play. That's usually the part where you wanna kind of stop and slow it down a little bit because that's the, that's the part that you're trying to emphasize. So look for those changes in tone, okay? Look for those key moments that are important and really make sure you're bringing out the proper emotion and the, the proper time, you're not rushing it, that, because that, that needs to be displayed in that, in that particular moment. Um, make your delivery based on observations. So what I mean by that is look at the script 
and observe all these things and to your best ability, deliver your lines in the way that makes sense based on the scene that's happening. Is the character being sarcastic? Is the character being absolutely serious? Is, is it funny? Is it serious? Like, look at the screenplay. You're only going to have so much to work with and, and interpret it and, and make your delivery based on the way that you think it's supposed to be interpreted. But be prepared to do it a number of different ways. Because you might get in there and your interpretation might be dead wrong. It probably won't be, but the director might have you do it a number of different ways. Uh, uh, my cousin um, used to tell me this story about when he was in a commercial he got this gig because he was willing to go in and go all the way. Um, and he had to do it a number of different ways. So he got on this scene. It was this great commercial where um, it's a car commercial where somebody, the paper boy throws a newspaper and it hits the new car in the driveway. And the guy who was played by my cousin runs out of the house, clearly just from the shower. And he's got nothing on but a towel. And it's like he heard the newspaper hit his new car. And he's like, looking around, like, where's that stupid paper boy? And then he actually takes the towel off and he's naked in the middle of the driveway, like trying to like clean the scuff off the car. It's kind of funny. Um, and it's like a it's like a car commercial. And it's like when you own this car, you know, you understand the love that pe our people have for our cars or whatever. Um, and when he tried out for that bit, they had him do it a number of different ways. They're like, OK, now we want you to do it with like a lot of energy. Now we want you to do it like a little more subtle. Now we want you to do it this way. Now, so be prepared as an actor. Sometimes they're doing it. Sometimes they know what they want but they're doing it just to see your ability. They're doing it just to stretch you. They're doing it just to see if you have some range as an actor or if you can only do this one thing. So sometimes they might have you do it, you know, comedy wise. Sometimes they might have you do it dramatic. Um, if we were here in class, we would have done this lesson earlier in the year and we would do an acting assignment and I would direct you and I would absolutely do this to you. I would have you do the scene the way it's written and then I would totally change it and say, okay, now instead of, two characters falling in love now it's a now it's a hostage situation or now instead of this being a hostage situation and this guy's a stalker now you're falling in love uh, and i would totally flip it on its head and and it would and it changes the whole dynamics of the scene and it makes you look at the characters a different way and also stretches you as an actor um obviously this goes without saying um but all the way through this process it's really important to be professional so be professional be on time show up when you're supposed to show up um be courteous be kind don't get in anyone's way um you know be as professional as you can because there's a lot of good actors out there there's a lot of good actors I i'm going to be honest with you for a second acting's not that hard okay acting's not that hard if you can act if you can act you can you can learn to act good enough that you can be a good enough actor but a lot of getting the roles have to do with every other thing that you have no control over, right? How do you look? Who do you know? Um, you know, what have you been in in the past, right? Your lucky break. Did you get a lucky break? Do people know who you are? Is there any name recognition? Things like that, okay? So acting to a certain degree, there are really talented actors. I don't want to belittle that. Um, but to a certain point, you know, acting is, a lot of people can act. There's a lot of people that can act. And there's a lot of people that want to act. So what can, what can often separate you apart is just being easy to work with being able to take direction, being professional, okay? Because if I have the choice between two actors that are equally as good and one of them I get along with really well and the other one annoys the crud out of me, guess who I'm gonna pick, okay? So be, be professional. Okay, you get the job, congratulations. Yeah, you got the part, you, you, they, you got called back, you got the part and now you're going in for the shoot. So before the shoot, before the shoot, here's how you can prepare, okay? Get into character. Okay, get into character. At this point, you know the whole range of the character. You have the whole screenplay. You know everything there is to know, right? So make sure you understand the whole scope of this character. Right, Emma? Right, Emma? Right? Right. Emma agrees. Okay, so make sure, make sure that you get into, make sure you get into character. You want to know the whole scope of this character. What is their character motivation? What is it that they're trying to accomplish? Where are their changes in character? Where does their where does their character change? Where does their tone change? Right? When do they start going through their character arc? Okay. You still want to practice. Keep practicing. Okay. Keep practicing because you're going to do a lot of takes and they want the continuity to be good. Remember, sometimes what makes a good actor is not necessarily just giving a good performance. It's also being able to give that good performance again and again and again and again and again, exactly the same way. 
because they got to do the wide shot and they got to do the singles and they got to do the other singles and they got to do that cool 360 camera shot and the steady cam, right? So you got to be able to repeat that amazing performance and that can be draining for a lot of people. So if you're a good actor or actress, you can continue that level of emotion over and over and over again, okay? So practicing it again and again and again and making sure you do it the same way can be beneficial. So know that character inside and out, know that character arc inside and out, understand that character motivation. Um, you might need to practice your blocking. If there's blocking, right? If you do you need to stop at a certain spot, is there an X on the ground that you need to make sure that you hit? Are there certain eye lines that you need to hit? Are there certain looks that you need to give at certain key moments? There might be. So practice that blocking if you're already familiar with it. If you're not, then maybe they'll teach it to you on set and you'll have to pick it up quickly. So that's the kind of thing that you can kind of practice uh, and get better at with the more practice that you get. Finally, just really commit to that role. Okay. I talk about my cousin on that commercial. You know why he got that role is because he fully committed to it. They had him do it a number of different ways. And the last time, the way he tells me this story, the last time he, he got that role, the last time they had him do it, they said, we want you to do it as big as you possibly can. Um, so when he did it, he did it as big as he possibly could. He busted down the door, flew out the window, fell over, rolled, his towel came up. There was probably some, you know, stuff for people to see. Um, and he got up and, and, you know, did the role as big as he possibly could. And when he did that, he heard the directors laughing. And he felt like, I think I got this because I made the directors laugh, right? Because I did as much as I, I committed fully. They wanted it as big as I could give it. So I did it as big as I could give it, okay? So really commit to whatever it is that they ask you to do, okay? Um, really believe that, you know, it, for that moment, you are that character in that scene. Believe in the world, you know, it's a magic trick. If you want it to be believable for the audience, you got to believe in that world too. And sometimes that's tough because sometimes you're reading the writing and you're like, this is garbage. I could write better stuff than this, but you know what? You're not the writer and you're not the director. So you've got to just take your direction and commit to it and believe it. And because maybe they see something that you don't, maybe they, maybe they understand the story a different way and maybe it's all going to come together. You don't know. So give that role the proper attention. Don't shortchange. This is your job. Don't shortchange it by not believing in it. Okay. Believe in it fully and commit. Okay. All right. On the shoot, finally. Now we're on set, we've done all of our practicing and we're ready to actually hit record, okay? Again, be professional, this goes without saying, but stay professional, okay? You're not there to goof around, you're not there to screw off, you're there to help get their shoot done as quickly as possible, right? So you wanna be professional and on target. That doesn't mean you can't be nice and friendly and joke around with people when it's appropriate. Those things are important. They help create a light tone that helps keep the stress level down. So those things are important, okay? But obviously, you got to be in character when you need to be in character. You need to be, you know, committed to your role. You need to be professional. So be professional when you're on set. Relax. This is honestly the most important thing that you can tell your actors when they're acting for you. It's difficult for it to actually work, but this is the most important step, honestly, is you just want people to be relaxed. The more relaxed they are, the more genuine and authentic and natural they seem when they're giving their lines. Think about your documentary units last year. We talked about this last year right? Like getting your interviews to relax so that they don't sound so unnatural. So they give you honest responses, right? Remember that? that? This is the most important thing. You want your actor to be relaxed. That can be really hard if they're not experienced, right? You've got a bunch of people on set and on, on larger sets. There's hundreds of people there all watching their performance, okay? If we were in class, you would be assigned a scene and you would be acting in front of our class. Like that's intimidating enough, right? Imagine like being in front of a whole bunch of people that you don't know. Right. So that can be a little bit tricky, but honestly, this is what makes the most difference. So whatever you can do, if you're acting to get yourself comfortable, or if you're directing to make your actors comfortable, this will be the most important thing. This will be the biggest factor. Okay. Try to get your people to relax. If they can relax and take a deep breath and chill out, it'll sound better. It will look better. They'll have fun. Okay. It goes, it's the key to everything, I think. Um, it's hard to get over stage fright. It's hard, you know, even when you're on set, you're not on stage, but there's a lot of people watching you, right? That takes practice, okay? So try to do anything you can to raise the comfort level of the people that you're working with. If you're acting, be really open to direction. You're not the director, 
you don't know best just because you went to freestyle and you're a film student. Okay. You, this is not your story when you're acting. It's somebody else's. That doesn't mean you can't influence it. That doesn't mean you can't offer suggestions. Okay. But the director's in charge. Okay. It's there. They can see things. They can see your performance and you can't, you can't see your performance on camera in that moment as you're giving it. Right. Because you're, you can't, you can't look at the screen while you're giving your performance. Right. So they can see you and they can instruct you and a good director will help you with that. Okay. And they'll make you feel comfortable and they'll give you positive direction and positive feedback when you need it. Okay. But take the direction. It's their movie. That's what they're paying you for. So do, that doesn't mean do anything you're uncomfortable with. Obviously you're still a person. Okay. All right. But it means you need to follow their direction. You need to do the, you know, the, you know, take the, take the direction that's given to you for that character. Okay. Um, you want to be consistent. So be consistent in how you give the role, how you, uh, your continuity, if you raise your hand at a certain place, continue to raise your hand at a certain place. Um, a good, a good set will have someone on set to help you with that. Um, but a lot of like smaller sets won't. So as an actor, try to remember that stuff, right? Like if, try to give your performance the same way, or if they give you direction to change it, change it and give your performance the same way after that over and over and over again. So try to try to follow um, the direction that's given and be consistent. Ask questions. If you don't know, time's money, right? If you don't know, if you don't understand what the director's asking you, ask, say, hang on, I'm, I'm, I don't understand. Like, hang on, like, can you, can you go through this again? I'm having difficulty with this part. Um, if you don't understand why a character is doing something, ask. Okay, because it's going to help your performance and the director will appreciate that because they don't want to waste film time or film or resources or money because you don't actually understand and you're too shy to speak up. Okay, so speak up if you don't actually understand something, make sure it's communicated clearly and effectively so that you and the director are on the same page or that you and the actor, if you're the director, are on the same page. So when I'm directing and I'm working with actors, I ask a lot of clarifying questions to make sure that my actor understands. So I'll, I'll tell them the direction that I want. And this is a good strategy for you. I'll tell them the director, I'll tell the actor the direction that I want. And then I'll follow up with, okay, do, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, is that clear? You know, like, do, you know, I'll follow up and, and make sure that they understand what it is that I'm asking. And again, commit to the role and the direction that's given, okay? There are times when you're not gonna like the direction that's given, okay? Tough, it's not your movie, okay? Like commit to it, that you're a professional actor, commit to it. Okay, a good director will hopefully be on the same page as you, um, but that's not always going to be the case. So commit to it and be professional and give give the performance that is required of you, assuming it's what you signed your contract for. Okay, don't do anything. I know it's Hollywood. Don't don't do anything that you're not uncomfortable doing. Okay, you don't have to do that. Okay, don't do that. All right. So commit to the role and commit to the direction that's given by the director. Okay. Finally. Um, as you are acting, here are some key tips for you as you're acting. These are things that you can pass on to your actors for your films. Some of the most important things that I think you can do. Um, maintain your eye lines. Okay, this is important. Where is your actor supposed to look, especially in close ups and stuff? The eye lines make a huge difference. Okay, where are the actors looking? Where are you supposed to look? Are you looking at the other actor's face? Are you looking through the other actor? You know, a lot of times when you're doing close ups, think about this. OK, when you're doing close ups, if the other actor is looking right at the other person's face, they'll get a little cross eyed because they're too close to each other. So a lot of times they'll teach you to look through the other actor, like look at one eye, look at the eye closest to the camera. So your eyes are closer to the camera and then look through the other actor. OK, um, look for that when you're directing in your close ups. Do you want your are, they, are your actors getting a little cross eyed because they're doing that? They're doing that um, romantic love scene and their faces are really close together, right? They're starting to get a little googly eyed, literally, and their eyes are starting to cross, right? Like, is that what you want? Because I've seen that in movies and it looks weird. It looks strange. So be cautious of that. So maintain your eye lines. Where are you supposed to look? Okay, if you're a director, you can give your actors a few places to look. I want you to look here. And then when you look away, this is your point over here because I know where it's going to cut to and that you're going to look in this direction over here. So look at that. Look at that building over there. That's your that's your mark for your eyes to look. Okay, so figure out where your eye lines are supposed to look and be consistent with that. This is especially important um, if you're working with like CGI. We do a lot of green screening these days with with characters that don't exist. 
or special effects that don't exist, this is becoming more and more demanding of actors because they have to imagine that that special effect is in front of them and they have to react to it or look at something that's not there yet, right? That the, that the, that the editors and the special effect artists are gonna put in in post-production. So then eyelines become really tricky. So where are they supposed to look and how can you maintain that eyeline with something that's not there? Okay, so you gotta be consistent in that and figure out where you're supposed to look. And if you don't know, you can always ask as the director. And if you are the director, you can help the actor by telling them where. Um, acting, this is a little, this is a little trick for you. Are you ready? Acting is really just action, reaction, and listening. That's what acting is. It's action, it's reaction to things that are happening, and it's listening. Those are the three things that you need to do as an actor. That means one of the most important things you do is are, you're reacting to what others are saying or you're listening to what others are saying in the movie. Okay. A lot of times young actors will memorize their lines and they think all they have to do is deliver their lines, but that's not true. You have to act when the other people are talking. You have to act when the other characters are talking. You have to act when things are happening in the scene. It's not just about delivering your lines a certain way, right? That you're in that character all the time. You cannot be thinking about your next line when the other character is talking to you in a dialogue scene. You should be as you should be that character listening to what they're saying to get that good performance. Okay, you should know your lines. You shouldn't have to think about what your next line is. It should be natural and organic. So as an actor, know that scene inside and out and think about it in that way. Your action, reaction, and listening. That's that's acting. Um, everyone's on your team when you're an actor. Okay, when you're on set, everyone's on your team. Everybody wants you to do well. So if that helps you, think about that. Okay, you might be in front of 100 people on set, but everybody wants you to succeed. Everyone's rooting for you. Nobody wants you to fail, right? Everyone's committed to this movie. Everyone's cheering you on. So no matter what you're doing, even if it's like a weird scene or even if it's embarrassing or you're crying in front of a bunch of people because that's what the scene calls for, like that can be uncomfortable enough. But recognize that everyone on that set is there because they believe in the movie, they care about the movie, and they want you to do well. That can help you, that can help you relax. Everyone's cheering for you. It's a safe place. No one's gonna make fun of you. No one's gonna be harsh on you, right? So put that into your frame of mind when you're acting or pass that on to your actors as you're directing. Everyone's on your team, okay? That can help people feel comfortable. Like no one's rooting against you. No one wants you to fail. Everyone's, everyone's here to help you. No one's gonna laugh at you or make fun of you if you mess up like, Everyone, everyone wants you to, everyone wants to see you win, right? Okay, so everyone's on the same team. Um, the camera sees everything. This goes back to Emma's point at the beginning of the lesson. This is not stage acting, okay? So be subtle. This is not theater acting, be subtle, right? When you're on stage, they teach you to act for the back row of the theater, right? So you have to be really big when you're acting on stage. This is not on stage. The camera's got a close up on you. You're 20 feet high on my screen, right? So subtlety goes a long way, as you're going to notice with your actors. Subtlety goes a long way. It's gonna, if you've done theater acting in the past, it's gonna feel when you're acting for film, it's gonna feel like you're not doing anything. It's gonna feel like you're standing still and not moving. It's gonna feel like it's not enough at first until you get really used to it, okay? And some of your actors are gonna be like that. They're gonna think they need to be a lot bigger. They don't, they don't. All right, they can just be really still and just relax. And a lot of it's just little subtle movements with the eyes or eyebrows, very subtle things. So oftentimes you can tell your actors, hey, you know what, you don't need to be that big. Dial it back, dial it back, be really small, be really small, be really small, um, especially for new actors who've never been on camera before. Steal from the best, okay? Do you, is there something that you like that another actor does in movies or a, a type of look or a type of like, thing that this actor does and you like that thing steal it make it your own okay steal it but change it make it your because you're going to do it differently so find find what that character does and then kind of make it your own thing there are things that harrison ford does in indiana jones that i do in my regular everyday life because i liked to to mimic him when i was younger because i loved indiana jones so much okay there are certain like i catch myself doing it once in a while and it's like oh that's i just did a harrison ford that's interesting Okay, we are easily influenced by those around us and by those in the media, right? Um, and those, those characters that we look up to, especially as young children, right? So if there's something that an actor does 
that you like and it fits your character and it fits your role or it fits the the person that you're trying to play um steal it but make it your own make it your own thing do it put your own spin on it do it do it your way um and and that could become your thing that someone else will copy from you in five or ten years right okay and again just relax do the best you can to relax when you're on set um relaxed sets are efficient sets fun sets they're sets that get all your actors and crew back again when you need them okay if it gets stressful that's when things get hard that's when things get dicey okay and the best thing that you can do as an actor or as a director especially as a director is to relax and just allow things to be a little fun you want to be efficient you want to get stuff done but if everyone's being professional then you're going to be fine you're going to be fine everyone's moving forward and, and getting ahead Okay, we're gonna watch a fun little movie here. This is from our friends at Vimeo Film School. I think I showed you a couple of these last year when you were juniors. This one is sort of a compilation video of how to be a good actor, but this can also be good information for you um, at to if you're not acting, to, to pass on to the people who are acting for your film. So uh, there's some there's some actually some good bits in here and some of it and some of it's stuff that I had in my in my slides as well. I just saw the most amazing movie. Deep Impact. Armageddon. I want to make a sequel and call it Armageddon Again and Again. We'll make a video just for fun, and I want you to play the lead. Uh, yeah. Okay, I've never really acted in anything before, but... Cool. Here's the script. We'll shoot in like an hour or so. Uh, sure. Great. I'm really excited. Hello, son. Who are you? I'm experienced Actorson. There's no time for small talk. Looks like you've got an audition to prepare for. What do we got here? Armageddon again and again. Sides are provided, huh? <laughs> Looks like a dramatic role. How'd you hear about this one? Backstage? Ross reports? Sorry, <laughs> Mr. Actorson? Yeah, please, call me experienced. Experienced? Uh, I've never really acted in anything before. I just need to know the basics. Fantastic. A newcomer. Good, listen. The most important things to know as an actor, be prepared, be relaxed, and don't be afraid to not get the job. The best way to memorize your lines is to run them with a, a friend, a parent, former lover. Run them until you know them like the back of your hand. What do you think we should do, Captain? Well, I guess we should see if Dan... No, no, I'm running sides now. Oh, right. Um, there are asteroids headed not just to our planet, but to every planet in the known universe. We need to destroy them? Hey, that's pretty great. Let's run it a few more times, shall we? <laughs> it's Armageddon, all right. Armageddon. Again and again. This acting thing isn't so hard, I'm practically memorized. <laughs> Fantastic. Off book already. Now the real work begins. Now, you build a character. You are the... You're the captain. Your motivation? To save the world. So I just need to pretend like I'm going to save the world. Look, you're playing an authority figure. The ultimate authority figure. Ever had to be the authority in real life? I was the camp counselor in eighth grade. Why don't you try the lines again? This time, imagine you're instructing one of your camp kids. Sure. Um, there are asteroids headed not just to our planet, but to every planet in the known universe, and we need to destroy them. Very good. Now look, your director may have you do it a few different ways. Maybe he's a little overconfident. Maybe he's unsure of himself. It'd be fun to play around with it. I don't think Dan's ever directed anything before. I'm not sure he's gonna know what he wants. <sighs> Listen. Regardless of your director's personality, regardless of their experience, they are watching your performance closer than anyone. So listen to them. Trust them! You smell awful. <laughs> let's go to set. Okay, guys. Let's get ready to do this again. I'm really excited. Let's start shooting in about five minutes. I'm really nervous all of a sudden. <laughs> Listen, even pros get the jitters, all right? Always prepare time to relax, but it looks like they're ready to go. Matt, so I want you to be really intense with your line, you know? Intense, like intense intense, or... Sorry, Dan, I don't know what you mean. Look, in the film business, time is crucial. If you don't know something, ask questions. Dan, sorry, can you explain it? 
Okay, try saying, it's Armageddon, all right. Then hit your mark. Hit mark? Uh, please don't. No, 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 don't hit mark, kid. Hit your mark. The mark is where the actor stands in the scene. Right, so anyway, you say, it's Armageddon, all right. Taking a dramatic pause, hitting your mark, and then you say, again and again. Okay. It's Armageddon, all right. Again and again. All right, try again, and this time, try taking like a full two seconds between those lines. Okay. It's Armageddon, all right. Again and again. Wow. That was, that was awesome. awesome. All right, let's shoot this thing. Okay, cut. That's a wrap, you guys. Great job, everyone. Hey, Dan, thanks a lot for asking me to do this. I had a lot of fun. No, oh, thanks, man. You were great. Uh, I got to start editing, though. See you later. Here's a quick rundown of what we learned today. Learning lines? Have a friend help run them well, with I you. If you don't it. have any friends, read it until you can do it in your sleep. Again and again. Ask questions. Time is valuable on set. The more you know, the better. And the sooner your director can call, cut! Move on to that awesome scene with the laser gun. Dialogue is a fancy term for lines. You may also hear the term sides thrown around. Sides refer to the excerpt of the script you'll be shooting that day. Motivation refers to what drives your character to do something or act the way that they act. Why did your character steal from his best friend? Because he's vengeful? A kleptomaniac? Ever been in a situation like that in real life? Perfect. If not, use your imagination. Filmmaking is a team effort. Big movie or little short. Always try what your director tells you, even if you don't think it's the best direction. If it's not feeling right, you should be able to make a suggestion. Last but not least, be relaxed. Have fun. You're acting. Why do you think they call it a play, for God's sake? So be fun. And have fun with the people around you. <laughs> You're a pro. You were really quiet. I always forget to turn my mic on afterwards. Kind of fun, right? Some good, some good information in there. Um, okay, if we were meeting here in class, we would have acting scenes. I would assign you and a partner to find a dialogue scene from a movie, preferably something that you haven't seen before, um, using a, a website that's got a whole bunch of screenplays. That might be something that we'll do in the future. Um, but we're not gonna do it right now because you guys are in the middle of narrative and you got stuff to worry about. You don't need to be memorizing something else. Um, so that's something that we would be doing in the future um, um, after this lesson. So you'd get the experience of practicing acting and memorizing lines and all that kind of stuff. Um, out of curiosity, um, how many of you are acting in a film this semester? Are any of you acting? No? Oh, interesting. Okay. All right. So this will be helpful um, as you are in a the director's point of view. So with that in mind, um, I thought it might be helpful. There's another one of these videos. I know today's mostly about acting, um, but I do have this other video that's sort of the other, it kind of pairs with that one. It's kind of the other side of that little video that we just watched. And it is specific to, um, to directing. So I thought that might be helpful um, uh, to watch that because we just learned about how to be a good actor, but another huge part of, you know, that is how to be a good director and how to work with actors. So I'll bring that up here. Um, and we, cause we have time for it and then, um, and I'll let you know what's going on for the rest of the week and then I'll let you go. So Mr. T. Yes. Um, when you were talking earlier about the eye lines thing where like actors sometimes have to work and like act around special effects. Yeah. There's this one clip I have. It's like a 30 second long clip from The Flash um, where it's it's uh, the actors like doing like the things that they do like with no special effects and then like they, they show how it looks after. Yeah. It's a pretty funny thing to watch. Oh, that's cool. Is it the, the new seconds. Flash? I yeah, like the, the newer Flash. one. The new one, the old one from the yeah. 90s is better. Just saying. I'll email you the link super fast. Okay, yeah, email me the link. That'd be cool. Uh, all right, directing 101. We just watched acting 101. So now we'll watch directing 101. 
same 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 film so that'll be that'll be kind of fun That's right, it is your responsibility. We drilled a huge hole in this asteroid. Now we're gonna detonate a nuclear bomb in it. I know that. I bet I could make a movie just like this. And that's a cut. Whoa, who are you? I'm experienced directorson. So, you wanna make a movie? Well, yeah, I wanna get some friends together. Yeah, you wanna, maybe you wanna shoot get some friends together. Maybe, 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 maybe do a little pre-production, a little, little attaching, a uh, big name town, a little storyboard, a little art direction. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a lot of responsibility. It is! Well, I, I don't know what any of that stuff is, but I did write the script in the two seconds the camera wasn't on me. I'm again, again and again. <laughs> An action epic. This is quite a big undertaking for a first time director such as yourself. Don't worry, I can help. Once you have your script, it's time to make storyboards. Some directors don't storyboard, but all of them make a shot list. This will help you to be as prepared as possible before setting foot on set. Thanks so much for helping me with my little short, everyone. Uh, I wrote it like less than an hour ago, so it's probably not gonna be very good. You don't care about your film, no one else will. Set the tone, be thoughtful, be excited, be grateful. You got a lot of classy, attractive, attractive, attractive friends, and they're doing you a kindness. I mean, thanks so much for doing my little short, everyone. It means a lot. I promise you, it's gonna be fun. A table read or powwow is a great way to articulate your vision to the cast and crew. Getting everyone on the same page about what their responsibilities are as a team is crucial to running a tight set. Okay guys, we're about to take our first shot, so I'm really excited and thank you all again. Don't forget to say action. Action. <sighs> I guess I should call my wife or something. I don't think I'm gonna make it home again. Cut, I don't like it. Come on, Kubrick. You can do better than that. When giving your actors feedback, re-articulate your vision. Get detailed. Remind them how important this moment is for their character. And even more importantly, be supportive of your actor. Okay, so Matt, this is a big moment because someone who's usually so tough is now gonna crack and freak out because they realize that they may never be coming home again. Can you relate to that? Yeah, sure. Great, I know you can because you're awesome and I love you. That a boy, Spielberg. Okay, so this is the final scene between Matt and Riley. I think I wanna do it all in a two shot. Can I recommend something? What if we tried over the shoulder close-ups, if there's time? Yeah, there's time, great. Collaboration is a big part of being on set, and your crew will respond very, very well to a collaborative director. And look, if you don't love someone's idea, be diplomatic about it, but if you've got the time, hey, why not? That idea could turn out better than any you've ever imagined. Yeah, okay, maybe not both close-up shots, but how about two close profile shots? Yeah, sure, I don't care. So we'll get a wide shot of you guys all doing your shuffle here, and then you guys join, and you're doing sort of a Charleston dance, and then the horse solo. Dan, hey, time's dwindling. We scheduled five hours, and there's only 10 minutes left. But I wrote this script. I need this shot. One thing people can live without is a director with an attitude problem. <laughs> and... No, 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 no! Um, okay. Uh, sorry, everybody. Um, I hate to say it, but let's lose the horse. No! You get the shot! Good heavens! I think I've made myself very clear over the years. You get the shot! Okay? Obviously, plan accordingly so that you don't wind up getting the most crucial horse shot at the end of your shoot with only 10 minutes left. Okay? Plan accordingly. Do a good job. But you get that horse shot. That horse shot is important. Good heavens. All right. Back to, back to the video. You look so sick. Okay, guys, that's a wrap. Thank you all so much for doing this. That was great. Seriously, guys. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. Yeah. Thanks, Dan.
Hey, congratulations, son. You're a director. How do you feel? I feel awesome. <laughs> Terrific. Let's review. A big piece of the directing pie tastes like preparation. So really invest yourself in your script. Know it inside and out and around and around again. How many shots do you need? What kind of shots? And estimate how long it will take. You and your crew will so appreciate it. Come at your project with your own style and vision. What are you trying to say? Has it been done before? Can you do it better? Making an action movie? Watch a ton. <laughs> See what works and what doesn't. Directors need respecters. <laughs> no, but seriously, you've got a loyal cast and crew looking up to you. So, be respectful. Be firm. Just do so without being <laughs> Know your terminology. I'm talking about very specific on-set basics and shots like this. Obviously, there's a lot more to directing than having a vision, being prepared, knowing your terminology, having a sensitivity to actors, a willingness to collaborate and think on one's feet, but you'll learn this in the real world. Just get on more sense. Talk to people. Or dare I say, more experience. <laughs> You're a pro. Do do, kind of fun. Um, hopefully, some good information in there um, in either of those videos that can help you as you are preparing for your film. Um, that is all. I hope this information was helpful to you. Um, uh, I I hope that we might have an opportunity to actually do a little bit of acting as as a small assignment in the future. Um, I think we're gonna get we're gonna get through narrative first and kind of see where we're at and then see how much time we've got for the other things that i want to do um but that is something that i would like to do if possible and i'll see if i can figure that out depending on okay that is all right to the end of class i will see you next week uh on tuesday that's what we'll plan for so long farewell love you all